Have you ever wondered how much time you spend scrolling through your phone each day? A seemingly simple question, but one that holds significant implications. In this digital age, our phone is not just a device. It's an extension of ourselves. It's our window to the world, our personal assistant, our entertainment hub. But how much of our lives do these small screens occupy? Let's put this into perspective. According to a study by Rescue Time, the average person spends about 3 hours and 15 minutes on their phone every day. 3 hours and 15 minutes. That's almost a fifth of our waking hours. And for one in four people, that number soars to over four and a half hours. It's as if we're working a part-time job with our phone as the demanding boss. But this isn't just about time, it's about our relationship with our phones. The term nomophobia, or the fear of being without a mobile phone, is now recognized by psychologists. It's a modern-day phenomenon, a testament to how ingrained these devices have become in our lives. Consider this, do you feel anxious when your phone battery dips below 20%? Do you reach for your phone as soon as you wake up? Do you find yourself mindlessly scrolling even when there's no new content to consume? These are all signs of a possible phone addiction. Addiction is a heavy term, often associated with substances like alcohol or drugs. But addiction to a behavior such as phone usage is just as real and just as impactful. It can affect our productivity, our relationships, our mental health. It can even alter the structure of our brains, as we shall explore later. But here's the crucial question. Is this constant connectivity a boon or a bane? Our phones offer unprecedented access to information and communication, yet they also tether us, limit us in unique ways. Could this constant companion be doing more harm than good? Let's dive deeper. Our brains are powerful machines, but what happens when we expose them to constant digital stimulation? For many of us, the smartphone has become a constant companion. Recent research, however, suggests that this digital dependency may be reshaping our brains in surprising ways. Various studies have discovered that excessive phone usage can alter the structure and function of our brains. Fascinating, isn't it? One study from the University of Sussex found that people who frequently use multiple devices simultaneously, a behavior known as media multitasking, have less brain density in the anterior cingulate cortex. That's the part of the brain responsible for emotional control and decision-making. Scary, right? Another research from South Korea coined the term digital dementia. It suggests that overuse of digital technology can result in the breakdown of cognitive abilities. This can be more severe in the developing brains of young people who overuse their phones. They observed that these individuals were more likely to experience memory loss and attention deficit, similar to the symptoms seen in head injury or psychiatric illness. Moreover, our brains have a feature known as neuroplasticity, which allows them to adapt and change as we learn and experience new things. Constant exposure to digital devices forces our brains to rewire themselves, affecting our ability to think deeply, concentrate for long periods, and even form new memories. So, you might wonder, what does all this mean? The short answer is that our brains are adaptable and they're adapting to the digital age. However, these adaptations might not always be beneficial. The changes might lead to decreased attention spans, reduced memory capacity, and a greater propensity for distraction. Indeed, our brains are powerful machines, but they are not invincible. The constant barrage of digital stimulation from our phones and other devices can lead to significant changes. These changes might not always be for the better, and they could have profound implications for our cognitive health and overall well-being. So, constant phone usage can significantly impact our brains, but what does this mean in the long run? Let's now turn our attention to a relatively new term, digital autism. Digital autism is a phrase coined to describe the repercussions of excessive digital interaction, particularly in children. It's a concept that references the potential side effects of spending too much time immersed in the digital world and less in the real one. This phenomenon is not about diagnosing a new form of autism per se, but rather, it's about drawing parallels between certain behavioral trends observed in heavy digital users and some symptoms traditionally associated with autism spectrum disorders. As our world becomes increasingly digital, so too does our propensity for digital autism. Children born in the 21st century are digital natives, their lives intertwined with technology from birth. They learn to swipe before they scribble, to type before they write. They are conditioned to communicate through screens, and as a result, may struggle with face-to-face -face interaction. This is where we see a rise in symptoms akin to those of autism. 
difficulties in social interaction, communication, and understanding other people's emotions and behavior. The impact of digital autism on an individual's social and emotional development can be profound. Like traditional autism, digital autism can hinder a person's ability to form and maintain relationships. It can stunt emotional growth, leading to difficulties in understanding and expressing emotions. It can also lead to a lack of empathy, as digital interactions often lack the nuances and subtleties of face-to-face -face communication. Moreover, it's not just about being socially awkward or emotionally stunted, digital autism can lead to a host of other issues like anxiety, depression, and even addiction. The constant need for digital stimulation can create a dependency on devices leading to withdrawal symptoms when not in use. This reliance on technology can lead to an unhealthy obsession, creating a vicious cycle that's hard to break. Digital autism is a serious and growing concern, but what can we do about it? It's not all doom and gloom, there are ways to combat the effects of digital autism. And these are not just theoretical, but practical, everyday steps that can make a significant difference. Let's start with some strategies to reduce phone usage. One of the most effective ways is to set specific tech-free times in your day. This could be during meals, before going to bed, or even a specific hour in the afternoon. By doing so, you're not just reducing screen time, but also encouraging your brain to engage in other activities. Next, consider the idea of a digital detox. This is a period where you intentionally stay away from digital devices. It could be for a few hours, a day, or even a week. The idea is to break the cycle of dependency and give your mind a much-needed break. Just like how our bodies require rest, our brains also need time to recharge and rejuvenate, but reducing phone usage alone is not the solution. It's also important to set boundaries for phone usage. This means being mindful of when and how you're using your phone. Are you mindlessly scrolling through social media, or are you using it for something productive? By being aware of your habits, you can start to make more conscious decisions about your digital consumption. Now let's talk about the role of psychologists and other mental health professionals. They play a crucial role in addressing digital autism. Through therapy and counseling, they can help individuals understand their digital habits and develop healthier ones. They can provide tools and strategies to manage digital autism effectively and help individuals regain control over their digital lives. Remember, it's not about completely eliminating digital devices from our lives, but rather about creating a healthy balance. It's about using technology to our advantage, not letting it control us. By taking a few simple steps, we can all work towards a healthier relationship with our digital devices. With these strategies in hand, we can combat digital autism and start to reclaim our minds. The power is in your hands, literally and figuratively. Let's make a conscious effort to use it wisely. In conclusion, our phones have a profound impact on our brains and our behaviors. We've journeyed through this digital landscape, exploring the implications of our attachment to our phones, We've looked into the mirror of our minds, seeing how our brains are reshaped and rewired by persistent phone usage. We've delved into the concept of digital autism, a phenomenon that is emerging as a result of our ever-increasing reliance on these devices. We've seen how the constant pinging, notifications, and the endless stream of information can lead to a sense of overload. It can make us feel disconnected, anxious, and even depressed. This is the crux of digital autism. A state where our digital interactions supersede our real-world connections, leading to a kind of social and emotional disconnect. But we've also discussed how we can combat this. We can take control of our phone usage, rather than letting it control us. We can establish digital boundaries, create phone-free zones and times, and purposefully engage in face-to-face -face interactions. We can use apps and settings to control notifications, and we can make a conscious effort to use our phones as tools not as appendages. The importance of being mindful of our phone usage cannot be overstated. It's not about demonizing technology or completely disconnecting from the digital world. Rather, it's about finding a balance, a way to use these powerful tools to enhance our lives, not diminish them. Knowledge is power, and understanding the effects of our digital behaviors can help us make better choices. So I urge you to share this video. Pass on this knowledge to your colleagues, friends, and family. It could help them understand their own digital behaviors, and perhaps even inspire them to make some positive changes. Remember, your phone is a tool. It's up to you to decide how and when to use it.